I am making a four layer cake and each layer is a different color and flavor. So it's a lot of effort, but it was a lovely cake. So let's get started with the chocolate cake. I'm making a wacky cake. I have a video dedicated to this on my channel already if you want more information. Basically, you mix a bunch of dry ingredients together, cocoa powder, flour, baking soda, salt. Then you add water, vinegar, there's a little instant coffee in there, and vanilla extract, and oil. And that's all this cake batter is. I'm adding black food coloring to make it black and mixing it in. And there you have it. Blackish, it's like slightly brown, but black enough. Now I'm making the gray cake. First, I'm toasting some black sesame seeds. If you've never had black sesame dessert before, oh, it is a treat. It's kind of like coffee and peanut butter. I know that sounds weird, but it's delicious. Anyway, I've toasted some black sesame seeds and I'm making a sesame butter here. Uh, it takes a while, you have to be patient. Uh, it'll be sort of gritty and asphalty at first. I know that looks really appetizing, doesn't it? Uh, but you have to just keep processing it and processing it until it turns into a paste. Now I have added a little oil in here uh, to help things come together. And as you can see now, it is a little bit more like a paste. I could have processed this much further than I wound up processing it, but I just got tired of it and I decided that this was good enough and so I stopped here. <laughs> Now I combine that with egg and sugar. I think that's it. I have a whole recipe up on my Patreon for my uh, $4 patrons, by the way, so they'll know what this is. Anyway, flour, baking powder, and sugar. This is a pretty simple cake batter, actually. I got it from The Joy of Cooking. It's peanut butter cake, except I'm just using black sesame butter instead of peanut butter. I splashed some milk in there to thin things out. And you have this beautiful gray cake batter. I know that looks so appetizing. Uh, it tastes really great though, um, if you like black sesame desserts. And now I have my gray cake and my black cake ready to go in the oven. I'm just baking them at the same time. Uh, I think the black cake wound up taking a little longer than the gray cake because it's wetter, but here they both are done. Now the next day, I took three days to make this, I'm making the purple and white cakes and I'm starting by whipping a bunch of egg whites because both the purple and the white cake need stiff peaked egg whites. There's a little sugar, a little cream of tartar. Now I'm making the white cake. This is just a very, very basic white cake recipe. A lot of wedding cakes are this. Uh, it, it's a great base for other sorts of fillings and toppings. Just creaming some butter and sugar together until they're fluffy and I used the beaters that I used to whip the egg whites. I didn't bother cleaning them. And now I'm sifting in some flour and baking powder and salt. It's a very, very, very basic, simple recipe. And in additions, you're adding in vanilla and milk and folding it in. And you're gonna wind up with a batter that's really more like a cookie dough. See how thick that is? But you lighten it up with a bunch of egg whites. This is what's going to give it its lift, but also its whiter color. Like this cake looks pretty yellow right now. Uh, when it bakes, it looks whiter. I could have also added white food coloring in hindsight. I just didn't feel like buying any, <laughs> so I didn't bother. But yeah, if you, if you really care about your colors and you want your whiter cake to be really, really super white, uh, you can use white food coloring. This is the batter when it's done. And now I'm just gonna pop that into the oven while I finish making the purple cake. So these are purple sweet potatoes. Uh, I am making an ube cake. These aren't quite the same as a uh, ube that I've used in the past. They're purple sweet potatoes with a purple skin. Um, and some of the flesh in these was more purple than others. So I microwaved them, peeled them, took the purplest of them and uh, processed the flesh until it was somewhat smooth in my little food processor. Getting a lot of work in this video. Anyway, there's my much loved recipe for ube cake. <laughs> I've got the sweet potato. I also have oil and corn syrup, a very odd ingredient, some egg yolks, a little vanilla and salt. And then there's a little bit of extra sugar in there. I had to add that just because like the ratios with the egg whites that I whipped up for the other cake were different. Long story short, I had to add extra sugar. I've got my dry ingredients on standby, just some cake flour, salt, and baking powder. And I got some milk on standby and purple food coloring also on standby. I wanted to make these colors as natural as possible. Like, you know, purple sweet potatoes are purple, but uh, you'll see the batter is not like purple enough. So I'm sifting in my dry ingredients and I made the mistake of getting the sifter stuck in the batter. That's why it didn't go in very well alternate with milk and gently fold in 
sift it above the bowl so you don't get it wet this time, pour in more dry ingredients and more milk, and then the purple food coloring makes its appearance. I added it in a little earlier because I didn't want to risk uh, adding it at the end and then over mixing the batter. So adding it at the beginning, the colors honestly are not showing up super well on this camera. Like the purple looks a little less gray in, in IRL. Uh, anyway, I'm folding in the egg whites now. And as I'm folding in the egg whites, I'm realizing, uh, now it's, it's not dark enough in color. So I added more food coloring, but I was really afraid at this point that if I tried to add too much more purple food coloring, that I would just deflate this batter. So gave it the old tap a tap to release any extra air bubbles before putting it in the oven next to the white cake. And here they are both baked up. Now on to day three, <laughs> the actual day in which I serve this cake to my friends. So I am making a dark chocolate frosting for the black layer. Pan, are you fat? Cats love to help me when I'm in the kitchen. Anyway, I'm melting some bittersweet chocolate chips in a double boiler, and then I'm adding in some cubed cold butter and stirring it in. This is one of my favorite uh, chocolate frostings, incidentally, because it's nice and rich and bitter. Uh, it's not sweet. I'm pouring in some hot water, which may sound strange to you, <laughs> and it looks weird, and it looks like you messed up the frosting, but trust the process. It stirs in and makes this really nice glossy glaze. And uh, I'm adding some creme de cacao here. It's nice to spike it with a little booze, like either creme de cacao or um, Kahlua is also good. Bailey's is good. There's a little dash of corn syrup and some vanilla extract. And believe it or not, that's it. That's all this frosting is. But I'm also adding the rest of my black food coloring. I just like squeezed every little last drop into that. It still wasn't quite as black as I would have liked it, but that's pretty dang close. Now I'm making the rest of the frosting for the other three layers. So I'm starting with three sticks of butter, which seems like a lot, but it really actually isn't. You'll see. Um, I'm basically doing a lazy American buttercream. I'm adding in the powdered sugar in parts, uh, alternating with some splashes of milk as needed. I'm gonna add some vanilla extract, uh, you know, cause even the other flavored frostings need the vanilla as a base. So the, um, white cake is gonna just have this frosting as is. Again, if I really wanted to be authentic with my colors, I could add white food coloring to that portion, but I did not. So I sort, I separated some of it out into a smaller bowl and tried to add purple food coloring. I squeezed just the last of my purple food coloring into it and it wasn't quite enough. If I were to make this cake again, uh, I would probably be more mindful of my food coloring and make sure I had enough before I started, but that's what it is. And then for the gray frosting, I was gonna use black food coloring, but I ran out of black food coloring, making the other black frosting black, and it turned out well because I just added the leftover sesame paste that I had and made this beautiful gray frosting with it. Now I put some frosting on a cardboard round to secure it to my cake thing. And now I'm leveling the cakes, which I can't show you because I don't have a tripod. So just, you know, I did this with all of the layers. I took the top layer off and I saved that for cake pops later. I'm gonna mix that with the leftover frosting. So no food waste. Now here's the part where I am not a cake decorator. <laughs> like I've dabbled, but I'm not that great. So don't uh, yell at me <laughs> for doing this incorrectly. Well, plus also this is a very unconventional technique. Usually you do not frost each layer individually and then stack them. Usually you like frost the in-between layers of the cakes as you stack them. And then you frost the exterior of the cake all in one go. But I wanted the exterior to be, to show all of the different colors of the cake. <laughs> so that's why I was uh, frosting them individually and separately. Uh, this black sesame frosting was a nightmare to work with. It was so thick and like because of the sesame paste, it, was, it had a great flavor. Um, I'm really glad that I used it because it really brought out that black sesame flavor, but oh my God, it was just so hard to, to work with. But I got it on the cake and I tried to level it out as best I could. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, this is the dark chocolate frosting. It cools to about this consistency. If you cool it too far, it kind of turns into candy. Uh, but yeah, if you cool it just right, it gets in this beautiful, glossy, luscious consistency. And I love that black. And there's the cake, all four layers, purple, white, gray, and black. And here it is sliced. 
And I gotta tell you, it was really tasty and all of the flavors worked really well together. I was pleasantly surprised. I knew that it would at least be okay, but it was good and it was very well received by the friends that I had over. And uh, it's a bit ambitious, but definitely make this cake if you want. Mm -hmm.